Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be painting a lighthouse in a thunderstorm. So I uh, hope you will be inspired to paint this along with me. Um, it's about a medium, probably intermediate difficulty painting. Um, so I'm going to show you step by step how to do it all the way through. I've got my husband Mark here with me. Hey there, everybody. He'll be man in chat for us. So let's get started. So this is the example painting that I did, and uh, I really like how it turned out. It was, I, you know, sometimes you get a thing in your head and you uh, picture it, but you're not sure. You can't really like find a photograph that you want to use. So I found this picture of a lighthouse, and then I, I actually saw, I think it was a book cover, um, a while back that had a lighthouse in a thunderstorm. and. Um, so I was like, okay, let's let's see if we can find some light, lightning pictures. So I looked up some lightning pictures. And we're going to use this lighthouse as our kind of uh, inspiration, but we're going to make it nice and moody and dark in the background. So that'd be a little, you know, not your average lightning or a uh, lighthouse picture. No, no comment. <laughs> what? He said we're going to make it moody. Moody. I'm just, I'm just not going to say anything. <laughs> There's all kinds of things you could go with on that uh, one. <laughs> Self-preservation is now in effect. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. Let's go over the palette really quick while i uh, got your attention here. So we got carbon black, uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, titanium white, thalo green yellow shade, thalo turquoise, and thalo blue green shade. Thalo turquoise can be made with these two colors. So if you don't have it, just mix these two together and have a nice big amount of it because we're going to use a lot of it in the sky and the water. Uh, this one is ultramarine blue and this one is dioxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, and cadmium yellow medium. Uh, dioxazine purple or something similar can be made with quinacridone magenta and burnt or uh, ultramarine blue. It might not be quite as dark, but it'll be similar shade. So if you don't have that one, you can mix it with those two. All right, and we've just got a few brushes that we'll be using. We'll be actually doing most of the sky with the Filbert brush. Um, and I'll also show you an option for using like a stippler uh, if you are more familiar and comfortable with that. But I did mine with the Filbert. And then the lighthouse and the waves were done with these two brushes. They're a flat, bright, a number four and a number two and the link is down in the description for all of these Princeton brushes. Uh, this is the brand that I like to use. And then there are links to these two. These are the liner brushes that I used in the Lightning, the uh, Royal Langnickel Zen 20 Aught, and the Royal Soft Grip. This comes with a set of five brushes. Uh, so if you don't want to buy the whole set, you can just use this one. And then I also used a fan brush for a little bit of the waves, and that was it. So not too many brushes for this one. All right, let's get started here. Let me set this aside. Uh-oh, my phone's on. Let's turn that off. <laughs> right now. Ding, we are yep. ready to go. Round one. <laughs> Sound off. There we go. <laughs> I think that's my brother. He signed me up for fantasy football, which I have no idea how to play. <laughs> so, the... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even going to start with that. And <laughs> He's I have trying no to explain clue it either. to me. Yeah, no, it's the blind leading the blind here. We're going to be trying to <laughs> figure it out together. Okay, so let's. I, I actually didn't do any sketching when I um, did my lighthouse, but I think I'll, we'll, I'll find it a little bit easier to show you. Um, probably will help to have at least the horizon line sort of in perspective. So if you just kind of use your four fingers and make a lay them flat here. You can kind of use that as your edge guide. Just set it on the edge there and kind of make a mark all the way down and then sort of just connect those. You want this horizon line to be straight so if you want to use a T-square um, to get that completely straight probably helpful. Well we didn't do too bad actually. Look at that. Alright well there we go. See? Um, and then the part that's sticking out here that has the lighthouse, a little rock or whatever it's setting on, it uh, is down from the horizon line about a half an inch, maybe three quarter of an inch. 
and it kind of just meanders. It's not a straight line. And then rounds off right about just uh, just under halfway. So if you kind of put your hand down, it's kind of if you just like lay your hand down and gently um, use that edge of your thumb. You know, I'm not sticking my thumb out. It's just kind of resting like a normal, normally on there and just kind of use that as where the end of your rock goes. And then this sort of goes diagonally down to this corner. Here, and we've got waves coming up here and here and over here. And that's pretty much it. The lighthouse itself is going to be about yay tall. It's right on the third mark. So if you want to split up, and it's always a good um, rule of thumb when you're painting to split your canvases into thirds. So the horizon line's on the third here and our lighthouse is gonna be on the third here. It's just a really good design um, habit to get into. It creates um, good visual, I don't know, balance, I think, uh, compositionally. It's just a good, it's called the golden rule or something like that, I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly the name for it, but it's been used for years and years and years. Uh, I think Leonardo da Vinci was one of the first to kind of come up with it. So, fancy. We're... I'm going to trust you on that one. <laughs> I, I'm starting to think what the golden rule actually was, but well, I don't think it's that. No, no, no. It's a golden something. I don't know what it's called. I, I guess I probably should have looked it up if I was going to mention it. Hashtag painting facts. <laughs> the golden something. Nailed it. Perfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get to painting. Golden ruler? I don't think so. No. It's something else. I Somebody in chat probably knows. So welcome to our chat today. Uh, we've got our, this is our Patreon only uh, bonus video for the month of August. It'll be uploaded in a couple months. Uh, so if you're watching it in, uh, what, September, October, then... Uh, Late 2017 right. and beyond. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to both groups, but uh, we really appreciate our patrons that they have made. Do you want to um, show our new side cam or do you want to wait? <gasps> We're just, all fancy. Oh, we are. We Double got a new fancy. side cam. Yeah. Is it cutting off over here or is it okay? No, it's okay. It's good? Yeah. All right. So... <clears throat> we'll go this back will to be the top fun. Yeah. View. We'll go back to the top view, but Mark's going to switch us back and forth during the show. So we were able to buy that from you guys' generous donations okay. this month. We, really, really appreciate it. Yes. Making everything possible for the palette cam and the yeah, side absolutely. cam. And, yes. Uh, somebody said the golden ratio. Thank you. Yes, that's it. Not the golden raisin. Not the golden raisin, raisin or rule. Rule. Ratio. <laughs> ratio. That sounds mathematic. <laughs> it is. Okay, good. Thank you, whoever that was. That was that came than me. from Sin Kildare. Thanks, Sin. All right, I'm adding some uh, white to some turquoise. I'm just going to make a nice big uh, puddle here to start with, with my filbert. And then I'm just going to sort of offload by smushing my brush so that I don't have a ton of paint on here. And I'm going to also grab some purple and make. I've got my, my palette's all wet here, so it's kind of soupy. I wet it down before I started, but maybe not as much as I should have, or, from, or more than I should have. Okay, I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to just kind of work this purple around the edges on this side, and it's got that turquoise in it, so it makes it kind of a really interesting purple. I'll grab some quinacridone magenta, add some of that up here, hi. <clears throat> Grab some straight dioxazine, do some really dark up here. And you notice I'm just going to kind of uh, lay these clouds in at first, just sort of little small brush strokes side to side, and let these colors sort of merge into one another as I work. We're not worried too much about the cloud formations at this point. We're just kind of trying to get some color down on the canvas. This will mostly... Um, most of it will be covered up, but we'll have a little bit of it peeking through here and there. Uh, let's put a little bit of this 
color over here. So let's grab some of that turquoise and put some of that over here too. I went ahead and kind of put our lighthouse in so we sort of know where it's going to be, but we're not going to really work around it or anything. We'll just put our sky right on top of it. Let's grab some more of that quinacridone here. And maybe a little bit of white. making a really interesting color with all that turquoise still in my brush. Let's just draw, paint in our horizon line here. And if you want to lay your T-square down, you can use that as a guideline. Just run it right along the edge. Go. And we add a little bit more white to our quinacridone over here. Kind of a bright area right here. Maybe a little bit more quinacridone and white. A little bit of a soft pink right here. It's not very light. Just want a slightly lighter area right in here. Let's just work some of this up in here. If we kind of do these sort of windswept brush strokes where we're kind of um, they're all sort of sweeping in this direction. Um, then if any of them kind of show, we, the sky is very painterly in this picture. It's not really smooth. There's a lot of brush strokes and stuff. That's how I chose to do it um, with the uh, filbert brush. So it's a little bit different than the really soft sky that we did uh, a couple months ago or last month. Uh, yeah, a couple months ago when we did the uh, green uh, field with the tree. So this is another technique for doing clouds. A little bit different from that one. Okay, so more pink down here. I'm just gonna get whatever is left on my brush out. There's the point, I'm just gonna press it nice and flat and just smush it all off because I wanna grab some of that dark turquoise and add it up here. And I'm kind of trying to see where I want my white area. I'm going to sort of leave that, this area where that brightest, uh, so it's actually gonna be right here, where that brightest part of the cloud is hitting. So we'll just blend this dark turquoise into what we've already done. And this stuff is still wet. If you go fast enough, um, it won't dry on you too quickly. We'll grab some of that lighter turquoise. We'll do the lighter turquoise around our light area here. Work it up into this area. But if you're finding that the paint is uh, either like lifting or feels very sticky, it's not going on smoothly, you can um, just hit it with a hair dryer. Not, you know, hit it, hit it, but blow, dry it, dry. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm going to lay out some acrylic glazing liquid. You can also use a little bit of that to uh, make the paint a little more fluid. That will extend the drying time a little bit too. So if you're having trouble with it drying too quickly on you, you can try adding a little bit of the glazing liquid into your paint. Add, grab some of that lighter turquoise there. I'm going to kind of connect behind where that lightning is hitting. Uh, there's a few pockets of a little bit lighter lighter clouds so we're just going to tap those in on top and kind of leave some of that pink showing through here and there 
not worried about kind of forming clouds at this point still we're just still kind of laying in some color blending it a little bit as we go and this is all dry over here so we're gonna be able to lay our color right on top let's grab some of that brighter turquoise here here and if you notice I'm just kind of changing the direction that I'm laying my brush strokes down I'm kind of setting it down and doing almost like cross hatching and just sort of tapping motions nothing really It's gonna take a little bit of time. Let's grab some phthalo blue now. Let's add some phthalo blue in here. It's gonna take a little time to fill in this whole area. So just kind of take your time and enjoy it. Don't try to cover it all up in one set. It's okay if a little bit, if it still shows through at this point, we can still, we'll be adding several more layers, so. Nice thing about this cloud, really, uh, this kind of cloud setting is um, it's a little bit more forgiving, I think, because we're sort of making it up uh, as we go. There's a few rules that we can follow, but they don't have to look like these white, perfect, fluffy clouds. We can have all this kind of interesting dark to light things happening. So um, I pretty much just made up the clouds myself uh, from where I thought that they should go. So. Just put in a few more areas. Let's grab some purple and add that to turquoise over here and make a really dark area right up here. Just tapping in. Let's tap in some of that down here. Mark was actually filming a thunderstorm. Did you? I don't. His video didn't come out very good, but we had a thunderstorm come through where the the clouds were all lighting up in like sequence. It was really cool. He did a time lapse on his phone, but it was kind of pixelated. It didn't really turn out very good. But he's not even listening to me. No, I'm not listening to you. Out. I'm just waiting for you to. I didn't want to rudely interrupt you. Okay. But yeah, it, yeah, the camera was you know can't handle going from dark to light like that. I right. Guess. Super bright. Yeah, it was, it was a good try at least. Yeah, it was really neat. Those are some of my favorite first memories of when we were first married. Was we, we lived in Arizona and we'd go out and watch the thunderstorms come in from miles away. You could, you could see them coming. Mm. It'd be fun. We'd stand outside. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'm just looking now for like white areas here and I'm just trying to tap in and cover up any white spots that I still see. Uh, another little trick that you can do if you've got white spots is uh, let this dry completely and then go back in with some thinned out watered down paint. And I'm not going to do it right now because it'll lift off my color but um, you can fill in all your little cracks by just putting in some watery paint. It kind of seeps down into those white spots. So I'm going to let that dry and while that's drying we'll work on our water. I'm going to grab some turquoise and some more of that purple. Get it nice and dark right here. Here again you can tape this off if you want to. You can use a ruler whatever works for you I find that if I use the edge of the brush this way instead of trying to make a line this way I get a straighter line if I am pointing the flat edge on that line and moving it side to side instead of trying to go like this because when you're pulling this way every little movement of your hand up and down uh, will affect the line but this way I don't know, I think uh, it has to do with maybe the fact that you're used to writing uh, from left to right. 
I just find that it's a little smoother. Okay, and then I'm gonna deliberately sort of do these side to side motions to create a few little dark and light areas in the water. Have instant waves happening. Let's grab some green. We'll do some dark green back here. Maybe grab a little bit of burnt sienna. Not cleaning out my brush, so we still have all kinds of other things going on in here. But these colors are all pretty close on the color wheel, so they're not gonna react weird to each other. We can mix them all pretty pretty easily without having any issues. The only one that might have problems is the phthalo green and the quinacridone magenta. If you mix those two together, they'd probably come out with kind of a gray, but in this case, we don't really mind. We'll put some of this lighter color, lighter green, added a little bit of white to that. Let's grab some of that blue. Just put a little bit of this in our water. As we get down here, we're just going <clears> to <throat> I have some lighthouse facts. Ooh, okay. I came prepared today. Nice. Somewhat. So the first known lighthouse was in Egypt. Alexandria? Man, how did you know that? It's a famous lighthouse. Wow. I read. You read, well, <laughs> that's not my fault. So, since you ruined it for me, I won't Sorry, sorry, further. sorry. I no, won't say anything else. No, you ruined it, <laughs> Miss Smarty Pants. I got one job. I guessed it right. I I'm have, so I happy. Have, I have one job. <laughs> okay, Let go. me do my job. Do it, do it. <laughs> All right, I, hold on before you do that. I'm. Here in the foreground, I'm going to make these waves a little bit bigger, so I'm going to sort of do these longer sweeping brush strokes this way all right go ahead go for it okay so where, where is it now there it is so i'm not going to try to pronounce the guy's name but him and his son constructed it between 300 and 280 bc it stood 450 feet high and it was one of the seven wonders of ancient world but it was destroyed in stages by invaders and earthquakes and so forth. And it was completely destroyed in the 1300s. So there's your first lighthouse in Alexandria, as Angela pointed out. Very cool. Which I don't think Alexandria exists anymore, does it? Is it called something different now? Is it I don't know. Cairo, maybe? I, I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> He's not joking. <laughs> I read emails all day long. Exactly. So when he gets home, he's just like, nope. No reading. No reading for fun. <laughs> I don't. I'm done with that. Okay. So that's about good. Just wanted some light and dark spots. We'll add more detail to it here in a minute. But, uh,. Okay, that's mostly dry now. So let's start adding some of this. I don't know how I ended up with the same color, like covering this entire area here, but let's try to push it back here. Get some order to this. So we're going to start adding some white areas. I'm going to keep a pa paper towel, and I really want to wipe off most of the extra paint so that I can kind of control it now a little bit more and we're going to lay in some light cloud areas so I'm just going to tap over the top we'll grab some phthalo blue add a little white to that Go. 
No, you're just making shapes however you want them to be? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of finding little areas that... Uh, snaking it back and forth and creating little pockets of color here. I'm not... So are you using the other colors you've already put down to see where there were naturally breaks already and just kind of painting Yeah, kind around? of, yeah, okay. a little bit, a little bit like that. So yeah, if there's a little uh, lighter area here, I'm going to add a little bit of that color there, make a sort of a triangle shape right here. I'm going very, very light with my paintbrush too, so... I'm barely tapping down. I have very little paint on here, and it's just going to kind of catch on the canvas. Now, this is where, if you wanted to, you could use a stippler and stipple, and that creates a little bit fluffier, fuzzier look, which I like too. So whatever is easier for you, if you're comfortable with using a stippler. Here again, you're not using a lot of paint on your brush. You're just kind of gently tapping. I usually like to lay the paint down thickest where I want it the brightest. And then as the paint disappears off my brush, I'll kind of work it around the edges and sort of scrub it in around the edges, but not, not try to go back over that area. Okay already getting some moodiness happening. Let's grab some green, some white. You know, it's bad news when there's a green something in happening in the clouds. So <laughs> that always gives that ominous feeling, right? Yeah, I think it means that there's hail, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I think that's what it, it is. Be. It's the light reflecting off the ice. Mm, there you go. You were too. I, I could be making that up also. <laughs> Let me use this to just scrub out those edges. Well, that's not working. All right. Already. We already, we have our first casualty. Okay, I'm going to open this up. If you want to shut up on mine, I'll try to do it quietly. My wet wipes thing is really loud. Oh, it's far enough away. Okay, good. Uh, so somebody wants to know, is the is your board dry? So I guess your, your paint. Yes, the, pi the paint is dry. Yes, the, the first layer of paint is dry, for sure. This down here is still wet, but that, as you can tell, because I just stuck my hand in it. You can turn your board, board upside down if you want to, uh, to keep your hand from getting in it. I actually put it, my hand in my paper towel, though, I think, so... All right. All right. Getting a little bit of green glow to some of these. Add a little bit of it up here. This is actually almost right right underneath our lighthouse. It's going to go right here. So we want to have some around the sides of it and kind of going behind it. And if you're getting some weird shapes and that you don't like, you can always uh, switch to a smaller filbert brush, brush too. I've I've done. Uh, I think I did some of the clouds in one of my recent paintings with one of my, let me see if I can find it. There, this one. This old filbert here that's all fuzzy makes great clouds. So choose what you're comfortable with. What whatever you've got, whatever works for you. Here I did it again. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's kind of a lost cause. I don't know why I'm trying to keep my hand clean. It's not gonna happen. All right, I'm gonna just wipe that off and clean out my brush. because I wanna go with some ultramarine blue now. Add a little bit of that in. It's all just, ultramarine is a little bit more on the purple side of the, of 
the uh, blue scale. So find a spot for that. I'll grab some white. Wipe most of it off. And we'll add a little bit of that in here. That's going to be a pretty color. It's a good color kind of transition between the green and the purple. So, we'll add a little bit of that on the sides here. And just anywhere where you need a little bit of softness between your green and the background. See how that kind of just blends it out a little bit. Not using a lot in my brush, just dry brushing in. Grab some that. Okay. Oh, you look doing the side cam. Okay. All right. I'll move my hand out of the way too. That's actually a pretty cool view from the side. Good. So thank you to all the Patreon supporters who make this view of possible. Absolutely. It's been great. This last, I mean, we had no idea when we started Patreon how well it would be received or what we would, you know, how it would go. But we've been blown away by everybody's support and we've been able to really upgrade, you know, get major new equipment for you guys and do a better quality show, hopefully. That's the goal, at least. Yeah, you know, this is the this side view is what I see through the whole show. Right. And, you know, I can see how hard you're pushing down on the brush or light or right. mixing that you can't really get from a top-down view. So mm -hmm. hopefully this will help people give a good perspective on, mm -hmm. on the techniques and also how you're holding your hand. Yeah, true. Yeah, how the brush is in my hand and all that good stuff. Okay, so I've got a little bit of that uh, quinacridone and purple mixture here that I picked up. Add some of that down low. So not too hard so far, hopefully. Uh, not too bad. Oh, okay, so before this brush, which one were you using to do the clouds? No, if only... Oh, the filbert? The filbert. Well, no, I just showed this one that this is another possibility to do this. Okay, with. so you did the Deerfoot Stippler. A little bit, a but little I've bit. done the rest of it with this. I mean, okay. it's, yeah, okay. it's been this brush the whole time. All right. For the most part. There's some controversy in chat, so oh. just want to make sure it's all cleared up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no real controversy. No fighting. <laughs> all right, I'm going to grab some Thalo Blue. A bit of white. Let's get some of that turquoisey color back up in here. So now we can go back kind of underneath these green and sort of set them back in. Give them a little bit of a shadow with this turquoise color here. It's not not super dark. It's got quite a bit of light in it. Now anywhere where we kind of touch down this color, we've got just hardly any on my brush. It's going to add like a little wispiness. Let's add a little bit of this 
kind of medium blue color. Grab some phthalo blue, almost straight phthalo blue, just slightly cut with color, and we'll add it to the bottom of this turquoise cloud here. Right under that really dark part. Add some more of it over here. Really, at, at any point that you're like, wow, these clouds look awesome, I want to stop, just stop. You know, they don't have to be, you don't have to use the same exact colors as I'm using or do it the same exact way with the same layers. Just um, you know, feel free to express yourself with these and see, see what happens. You can always paint over it. It's just paint. I think a lot of times we learn more from our mistakes than our, you know, more from our kind of failures than we do from our successes, so. Yeah, when I hit my head on something, really I learn not to do that again. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, that's a mistake. Yep. I Don't do that. Yeah. It's words of wisdom. Just, you're welcome. All right, let's grab some of that. Thalo turquoise and some of the thalo blue make kind of a really dark blue. Add some of that around back. Actually, let's grab some of the burnt umber and add that to that. There we go. I want it really dark back here. Kind of where those waves are crashing up against, we need some really dark right here in this area so that when we put this white fluff over the top We've got some really dark contrast behind it so that they sh really show up okay and then I'm just going to pull now the the rule of thumb basically is that these waves are going to get smaller and less defined the farther away they are they're getting to to us so these ones that are up here on the horizon line are going to be very small unless we've got our unless we are our, our um, perspective is low enough that we're seeing these waves come up over the horizon line then we might see some really big um, you know waves up high but because of the way our our lighthouse is you know perspective is the highest our waves are going to come is about right here and the really big ones are just going to stay down in this area here so this one's back here are just going to get a little bit smaller as they go away from us and by the time they get back here they're just going to be like little little straight lines they can be a little bit curved but these ones up here are what's going to really have some movement and let's do a nice big dark area right here coming in underneath our waves and then we'll put our light colors on top. Okay, I think we're set. See how we left kind of a little highlighted area right here? And then we've got some nice dark areas around it. Let's put in our shoreline. Grab some black and burnt umber. I'm going to turn this a little bit just to make it easier to put it in. And I'm going to just tap in some rocky... looking stuff right there didn't clean out my brush so we're, if we've got a little blue in there that's fine nice and dark right here and just kind of sort of follow those waves a little bit Don't cover them all up. It's going to be kind of a zigzaggy line right here. This part's going to come down. This kind of rounds out like that. It's pretty high up here. This is going, you're going to want this to stay pretty level. So make sure it doesn't taper down too much. You kind of want to leave it um, kind of even with your horizon lines. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Here. There we go. So Kathleen is paying attention. Yes. She said that it was a nice explanation for wave size. Oh, good. Good. Thank you. 
glad that made sense. Sometimes it's hard to explain some of this stuff, especially when I'm painting. Hard to find my words. <laughs> so I'm always happy when somebody's like, oh, that made sense. Score. <laughs> Mission accomplished. All right, so I've got some burnt sienna here. I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber and grabbing some blue. It's going to be our highlight color for our rocks. And I'm just going to kind of lay my brush sort of at an angle. And we've done rocks before. You kind of know sort of generally the... We want to leave dark areas underneath, but we're going to kind of do this sort of side to side motion so we catch some of the light. Actually, the light's going to be kind of coming from this direction, so the top will be a little bit lighter up here than down here. It's going to be a little bit darker, so I don't have to worry about too much down there, but we do want some light stuff happening up here. Not too bright though. It's really kind of keeping it fairly dark. This whole, you know, thing is very, very dark night sky going on, so it's not going to be very bright. There we go. I'm going to find a few little rocks. If you want to and feel more comfortable, you can change your brush to a smaller brush. Um, whatever works better for you. Okay, I think that's pretty good. What it looks like there. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to see what it looks like on camera. I'll grab some purple. I like to use a little bit of purple in my rocks too, since we use it up in the sky. We'll add a little bit of to that. Okay, good. Good deal. All right, we're going to do some lightning. This is fun. <laughs> ready? I am ready. I'm ready for lightning. Actually, let me think. Yeah, I'll go ahead and just do the lightning first and then we'll add the white around it if we need to. Alright, so I'm going to grab some white. I put out way more white than we're going to need for this painting, but that's alright. White. And if you have a liquid, uh, the fluid acrylics and golden, just use a fluid acrylics. It'll be easier. Um, you're going to want to really wet it down. It should be the consistency of milk. So very, very thin. Kind of pulling it off right out of the middle of that really paint. This is not wanting to scoop up. There we go. Scoop it up. Nice big amount and then just keep dipping into your water and pulling it over to here and make a little puddle. Whoops, and it's getting a little bit of the Glazing liquid in there, but that's actually not a bad thing. So it'll make it a little bit more transparent if we want. There we go. Okay. Good. And then I'm going to roll my brush to a point, and then I'm going to take my paper towel and just wipe off all this extra gunk that's on the edge because we don't want that dripping off onto our canvas. Okay, and then with the liner brush, with this lightning, I'm holding it farther back than I might normally hold it. Usually when I'm doing lining, I'm holding it real up close so that I can get it a tight control on it. But for this, I want to have a little bit looser feel. I want uh, some unusual things happening to the lightning. Um, it'll look a little bit more natural if we just kind of let the brush decide which direction it wants to go. So I'm just going to barely drag the tip and... Go back and forth and let these zigzaggy things happen like that okay then this will be kind of our we'll do one up here that's this one I'm gonna hold the brush too that's so that it's sort of uh, perpendicular to the to the canvas and 
tilted slightly in the direction that you want to pull it. If, if you think about your brush like a mop, so when you're mopping your floor, you're pulling your mop this way. If you pushed it this way, your bristles are gonna flare out. That's what happens with your liner brush, especially because it's so long that if you don't lead it and guide those bristles where you want them to go, if you accidentally push them in the opposite direction of, of the angle, it will do like that and they will just flare out and then you'll get a big um, line. Uh, the line will break is what I call it. So you just kind of want to always sort of angle it in the direction that you want that line to go. And if you're finding it is too hard to control way out, way farther out, you can kind of uh, prop up your fist with your other hand. So hopefully not on a wet canvas, but <laughs> off to the side here and use that as a leverage really helps give you a little bit more control over your hand and you'll find it's a lot easier to do these lines and if they're if the paint is just not flowing onto the canvas that means it's not wet enough so just add a little water to your brush every now and then because it will dry out even though your paint's wet your brush still needs to be hydrated too because it will dry out and it'll just kind of wick all the moisture out of your paint. See that? Isn't that fun? It's so fun doing these. I, I love doing lightning because it's just so, I don't know, you can just kind of let your imagination go and all kinds of interesting shapes and and it's very kind of, it's not as linear as a tree branch would be. You know, the tree branch is a little bit more smooth, some, mostly. So this is a little bit more jagged, obviously. So you're going to have a lot more zigzaggy type lines. So be a little bit more um, sort of geometric with it. Don't have to have a smooth, flowy line. You want it to be kind of back and forth. All right, let's have one that goes right down to the water. Let's do this one here. All the way down to the water. Questions about this? Doing good? No, no okay. questions. Awesome. I mean, like you say, you know, lighting is always so random, so there's right. no wrong way to do it. Exactly. That's the nice thing. It's just. Well, I'm sure I could probably find a way to do it. I mean, wrong. the main thing is just to keep your lines thin. That's that's the that's the main part that you know. And as you get farther out. Uh, from this area here where it starts they'll get a little bit thinner so you know kind of like a tree branch effect they thin as you as they get farther away from the main strike so I can maybe thicken up this area here just slightly but I would try not to not to go over your previously painted lines too much because uh, just makes it a little bit harder to control. I mean, unless you're really good at line line work, uh, then, but the more you, I find that when I'm lining, or, you know, especially when you're kind of learning to line, do lining work, the more you fuss with the line, the wider it's gonna get. So it's actually better just to have a line that's a little bit too thin in the spot than to go back over a line and make it super, super thick. Uh, 
So we can always kind of tap over this. We're going to tap over a little bit of it with some light, some white to sort of set these back in and you can kind of fix any little boo-boos that you have at that point um, when we do that. Okay, let's do one that's kind of coming up this way towards our lighthouse. And I'm trying to decide if I want to connect these two. I didn't, I had kind of one bolt coming down, but I don't mind having two right there, I think. And I mean, really, if you wanted to, you could have another one over here. I kind of played with it a little bit, but I decided to kind of keep it all over on this side when I did mine. But if you want to add some coming out of these clouds too, go for it. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna let that dry. And then we'll come back in and add some really bright, like, bursts of white. Where those clouds? I think I added too much white on my example one, so I don't think I'm gonna add it quite as much. I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of white around here because I'm liking what this sky is looking like back here. So, all right. So let's work on our C. Finish that up. I'm gonna grab some little green. A little bit of burnt sienna. Make kind of a neutral gray green color. There we go. This will be sort of our color for our foot sea foam. So I'm just going to start to lay in some random lines that are kind of going to do this little. Uh, back and forth like cupping motion almost like a C but not quite a C and just add some of that and these waves are going to be splashing up this way so we'll pull some this way. Grab some white. I want a little bit of turquoise in there too. I'm going to spray my palette because it's getting dry. Just to keep that yellow wet. There we go. And a little bit of that burnt sienna to that turquoise color. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay. Kind of going underneath the green areas here, just kind of blending those two colors into my C color. Now, go ahead. Go ahead. It's completely quiet, and I go to talk, and you talk over me. Go for it. Sorry. No, no. It's okay. <laughs> I do it's, it on purpose. It, I just wait. Yeah, I know. You're like, <laughs> wait for him to talk. No, he's going to give another lighthouse fast. Okay. Saying that the oldest existing lighthouse in the world is the one that is considered or is considered to be the one in La Coruna in Spain, mm -hmm. which dates back from 20 B.C. 20 B.C.? Mm -hmm. Wow. And there's a Roman lighthouse in the cliffs of Dover in the U.K. that was built in 40 A.D. There's some pretty old lighthouses yeah. there. Yeah. I wonder what they look like. I'll have to look that up later. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, turquoise with white here now, so it's a little bit brighter. And we're just going to add a little bit of that. And over here. And just do kind of a zigzaggy line right here. Kind of angle it this way, and then we'll do another one that sort of angles this way off of it. Up. Up. 
So there's a swell here, and then there's kind of a section that's sort of... I'm trying to define these for you so it makes more sense. Let's do it with white here so you can see. I'm going to start out here, kind of do these. I'm still kind of doing these little C strokes, even though they're kind of connecting to one another at this point. And then we'll do some like that. So it's sort of diagonal down this way. And then we'll sweep it up this way. Get some nice big one right here. Back down, then do one there. This is turquoise and white here that I've got on my brush. All right, now up against the rock here, I'm going to do tap in. And my wave is going to kind of be going this way and this way at the same time. So it's kind of wrapping around this. So there's all kinds of turbulence happening here. So this is going to come up this way. And then this one is sort of rolling in behind it. And there's going to be white caps on all of this. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I may need to switch to a little bit smaller brush, but for now I'm going to just try to sort of tap with the corner of it. Yeah, I need a smaller brush. It's just not, it's going to create weird shapes for me. So. Add a little tiny bit of white right here. Just just a couple lines in our water right there. Okay, looking pretty good, I think. We'll uh, straighten this out a little bit here. Grab a little bit of turquoise. I'm going to add a little bit of that turquoise in here. Right underneath those lighter, kind of kind of blending between that real dark area and the lighter area, just kind of softening that effect a little bit. And keeping with this kind of side to side sweeping motion. Grab a little bit of our lighter turquoise, grab some of that green. This really is just kind of small changes that we're making, just kind of blending these two together, soften them up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm liking that. It, sometimes it'll help if you just take a step back and look at it from farther away, because when you're like right here on it, sometimes it's harder. That's why I, look, I like to look up at the computer screen because then I can see it a little you know it, it sort of separates it so even taking a picture of it and looking at it on your phone sometimes can help um, also looking at it in black and white 
will help you to see if you've got enough dark and light contrast in some areas because sometimes that's one of the hardest parts to see with the naked eye um, without, you know, experience. It's just, I know for myself, uh, especially when I was drawing, when I was learning to draw, uh, that's one of the things that my my college professor pointed out to me because I thought I was the bomb. I was like, I can draw. I, you know, I came in thinking I was all that. <laughs> And he quickly <laughs> pointed out a lot of the things that I uh, needed to work on and values was, was one of them. I'm, my drawings were very flat because they were sort of all in the same tone. They weren't, there wasn't any real dark and really light areas. So we want that in our paintings too. We want really, really dark and really, really light. And that is what gives it depth. Okay, let's grab some white here. I think that's a good tip about the black and white picture. Mm -hmm. I never really thought of Helps that. Helps a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, somebody wants okay. to know what type of lighting what type of lighting are we using in the studio? Well, we've got daylight bulbs, which helps, I think, uh, give you more accurate light uh, and it's spectrum. Like a, it's a full spectrum lights uh, light bulbs, so you don't have the yellow cast or the you know yellow cast of the incandescent bulbs and the um, blue cast of the of the uh, fluorescent. We use LED lights um, because they're less hot. Thank the Lord. It doesn't become an oven in here anymore. Oh my gosh, it used to be so hot in here. I would not <laughs> even because I have like twenty something lights and. Before we invested in LEDs, I would just be dying by the end of a painting. It would just be so hot in here. It's just the LEDs still put out some heat, but not as much as as the. Yeah, and the cost of the LED bulbs have come down dramatically. Right. You right. Know, we buy them at a you know chain store, and they're not that expensive anymore, mm -hmm. so they're reasonable. So the people in chat are loving okay. the colors. Good. And several of them. I'm going to take them, a wet paper towel here. Hold on. Go ahead. Oh, several of them just said that they're probably going to paint this multiple times. <gasps> Good. Oh, that's uh, awesome. I'm so glad. I really, really loved how it turned out. Like, I just was so pleased with, you know, that there was, you know, you just never know with painting. It's always kind of an adventure. <laughs> you have ideas. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't work so well. So... I was really happy with this one. I was like, yes, I. it was just what I had pictured. So really happy with how it turned. I'm glad you guys like it too. So it was really different and something kind of interesting. Okay, so just adding a little bit of really bright white, kind of blending it in very softly. Um, I want it really bright right where that ori origin is for the lightning, right up against that dark there and there. And then wipe all of that off there, and I can kind of use my dry brush to sort of blend that out while it's wet just a little bit. Okay, let me add one more really bright spot right here. Just kind of use my finger to blend it out. Like this, clouds are lighting up inside. Let's do a little bit of really bright over here. Not as bright as the white, white, though, right there. And then let's grab some of the blue. Turquoise, maybe a shade lighter than this cloud. We're just going to go right up against that white area. Grab some white. There we go. Just soften that transition just slightly between those two colors. 
just grab some of that medium color that's sort of in between that very, very light and very, very dark. So we'll just kind of brighten that up just slightly. There we go. Kind of make it make a little bit more sense to the eye. liking it. Let's add a little bit of those clouds coming down here. A little bit of white. I think we're good. Okay, let's, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to grab my liner brush. Grab some of that white. And we're going to make some foam. Just tapping in some random shapes with the liner brush with the bright white. We just do it at the very top of just a few of these. Little dots, lines. You can use a round brush a little bit wider than this one if it's giving you weird shapes, but I think this is working. Then we can also kind of draw some little zigzaggy foam in our in our water down here too. Just a little bit of it. Maybe at the top of I'm not gonna see a huge amount of detail down here, so don't spend too much time with that, but let me get, I feel like I want, yeah, let's get the, this is my bright number two, grab some white in my turquoise, I'm just going to put in some movement. Right up underneath here, I'm just going to pull up, sweep it up a little bit. Now that we've got that white in there, we can kind of tone it down a little bit with this. Grab a little bit of white on the tip of this and tap it in and sweep down to create more movement in our wave here. So this is just kind of one big wave that's sort of coming off of this rock. It's coming in contact with it and it's kind of falling back on itself. And this one's sort of coming up behind it. And then it's sort of falling out this way. So. like that. Just making sure you're leaving a little bit of this really dark in there. That's what's going to make it work. Uh, if you cover too much of that up, it'll just look a little kind of flat. So just want to pull in a few lines of directional brush strokes. Right up against that shoreline. Grab my real white. It's really not all that bright, bright. It's really kind of more blue. I probably ought to tone that down a little bit. There we go. The farther away from that lightning you get, these are going to be a little bit more toned down. So really, don't need to do white, white up here. You can do. A turquoise white. So maybe you could just paint like a giant stick man there. Kind of like standing on the shore. Yeah, like kind, of, kind of like a Statue of Liberty kind of thing going on. <laughs> I think it would make the painting much better. Much better? Okay. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you improve right. your your, uh, your subject matter. I see. Okay. Got it. I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> I'm 
sure you will. <laughs> hey, time for the little bear talk. <gasps> oh, cute. So cute. I know. Okay, I had to, he had to make an appearance. Did you get that there in Kansas City? I did. He just makes me happy sitting over there with holding my chalk. I used to have my chalk in a little, little tin cup. It wasn't nearly as cute. This. I mean, come on. Which one would you choose? <laughs> Enough said. We'll see how long he goes without paint on him. Oh, it won't take long. He's going to have paint on him. That's okay. That just gives him more character. Okay, so I need to figure out where my lines go again here. So here's my third mark. So it's going to be the center of my lighthouse. And then I want to kind of just do a, like a large C, kind of spread my fingers as long as far as I can and I'm using my middle finger as the top and I want to come down a good probably quarter inch at least um, onto my rock here and there's the top of it and it kind of widens at the base so I'm going to kind of start wide start and there we go. Kind of curves right here a little bit. Make sure this is flat. Try not to get them to tilt. It, if you need to, what you can do is draw a center line with your T-square right down the middle of your lighthouse. Let me find the middle here. Got to kind of push it over a little bit with this chalk. It's so thick. There we go. Now we want to make sure that we get even spacing on both sides of that line. You can even measure it if you want to get real fancy with it, but just gently tapers up. Okay, so right about here, there's our spire right there. So that's the top of our lighthouse does a triangle right here like that and then it's actually not as wide right here where the light part is it comes in slightly here again make sure you're getting it even if you can and this part comes out and angles down to the lighthouse itself on either side and then this part is rounded right here too so these both were looking slightly upwards so this we're seeing this rounded curve just slightly right there and then a little party hat on top I think that looks pretty good I might have mine a little bit higher than I did in my example but did you just say party hat on well, top? well it does look like a party hat doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a late night. <laughs> Still got party hat on. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me see. I might. Yeah, I think my other one was a little bit farther down. I think I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. Adjustments here. There we go. That's better. And curve up just slightly. And then there's my light window. Line across. There's a little bit of a thickness there, but not much. And then party hat. There we go. Better, better. Much better. Okay, let me clean my brushes out really well. And set them on my paper towel. Try to keep water in them since they're not fully clean. 
yet. But I'm not going to leave them in my water this time. I'm going to be good. I always leave them in my water too long and they start to split. But these are new, so I don't want them to split. I'll try to take better care of them. And if somebody doesn't have a brush that you're using, where could they get them? The link's down in the description. I already mentioned that, but yes, they are, they're from the brushguys.com. And if you look on teacher recommended brushes, my list is in there. And that's way more brushes than you're going to need. So <laughs> I listed every brush that you could possibly probably need. But, uh, they have really good prices on their brushes, plus you get an extra 5% off if you use my code, which is Angela Fine Art. So, it's a pretty good deal. Sweet. Yes, thank you, honey. I might just borrow yeah, yours maybe. instead of buying my own. <laughs> okay, so let's add our lighthouse here. Let's, I'm going to start with a little bit of black and brown. And I'm going to do this side of him. Pretty similar to our rock color, right? He's going to nice and dark. He's going to just kind of blend right into that rock. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white. And I'm just going to pull from that dark color this way, not all the way to the edge. Curving my lines just slightly. And then I'm going to grab more white and a little bit of phthalo blue, adding that to that brown color. So it's going to all mix together and make a kind of a gray with a little bit of a blue tint. I'm going to smush off my extra paint there because it's just way too much black in there. There we go. And I'm going to set my brush down on the end and pull this way along that line. Just let it drag into the dark color. If you want to, you can kind of use the edge and sort of do a smooth line along that. Whoops, like Just pulling lightly, and I'm lifting. I'm just flicking. I'm not pulling my my hand across. I'm setting it down, and I'm holding it really, really close down to the brush itself. Because I want when I do this motion, I want it to end right here. Uh, it's going to lift off of the canvas. Oh, move my hand. Okay. Yeah, do the side view. It'll be easier to see. Okay, so I'm going to set it down and flick, 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 and it will. Now, if I do it too far over, that's okay. I can come back in the opposite direction with my dark color. Okay, let's grab some of that brown. Mix that with what color we've got. <clears throat> and we'll sort of do it in the middle part here. We'll just lightly, very lightly Pulling lines, highlighting the center of our lighthouse. And if it doesn't look rounded enough to you, you can go back and clean my brush out really well. <clears throat> go back in with a little bit of the black. Wipe off most of it and sort of just pull. Actually, I don't want it that dark though. I want more umber in there. There we go. This side's going to be our nice and dark.
you may need to let yours dry between layers because mine is starting to get sticky over here so it's not one to blend all that well look at it on camera okay <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna do a rock that kind of comes up high right here and right at the base there wipe that off and blend that out into my land and then I'm gonna grab some of the brown and gray color and just highlight it just a little bit. I mean, it's going to be pretty dark on the back side of that lighthouse, but we want it to be a little bit bright so you can kind of see that it's a rock there. kind of a transition color between the really really dark and the really bright blue so I'm going to kind of make a middle value color to use right here pull Take your time with this and work back and forth. Having these kind of curved evenly or, you know, in the same direction will help too. So I'm kind of curving up just slightly as I pull across. Got a little bit too much of the bright right there. Go back in with the dark. Here I'm going to do nice and dark right up on this area. This is kind of like an observation deck in the picture. It's got some windows, looks like, all the way around. I'm not getting too fancy with it, but oh, okay. Got all these windows around here so you can stand in here and look out. And there's some railings here and here. So I'm not, I didn't get as detailed in mine. Um, but I do want to kind of make this sort of similar shape. The angles out. Grab a little bit of black and we'll do a little dark line right up underneath. And on either side. And on top. Like that. And then I just kind of separated it uh, to kind of a line down the middle and on either side. If you want to get more detail with your light your lighthouse, go right ahead. There's all kinds of <clears throat> all kind of detail and I have the picture that I'm using the reference picture was sent uh, or is posted in the Patreon uh, post that I did that had the link to this video so uh, there's like three pictures that I used for reference and this one is one of them that's in there on Patreon if you want to look for it to uh, do more detail with your lighthouse Okay, drawing the party hat. It's kind of curved out 
a little bit. Make sure that it's centered. Give it kind of a spire there at the top. <clears throat> not an hour and a half that's not too bad actually I thought it was going to go two and a half hours so I'm making a good time on you're this you're doing awesome yeah I'm surprised still painting faster than other people can so they just stop huh? trying to keep up with you oh really yeah <laughs> people trying to paint along yeah, I, I feel for you trying to paint along because I've tried doing that it's really hard to to paint, to paint along and with watch yourself? and no I painted oh. along with Simon once remember oh. one of the first oh, yeah. collaborations we yeah. did and my, that was so hard because you know I would try to do what she had just done and then I would miss what colors she had just used and and you know just have to kind of guess and then I guess it's because you know what you're going to be doing next right and so then if you're just watching somebody you can't have that anticipation exactly yeah I think that's part of it I'm going to make some turquoise here. I want to I feel like I want to lighten up this area right here. So another fact when you're ready. Go for it. Uh, the only manned lighthouse in the United States is in Boston. In I've that, been what, the ahead. manned lighthouse is yeah. it in the hat? No. Uh it is the Sandy Hook lighthouse. Oh no, sorry. The Boston Lighthouse on Brewster Island, Brewster in, in Island. Boston okay. Harbor. Because I, I had a uh, girlfriend. We lived on Nahant, which is across the bay from Boston, and um, they lived in it. The little lighthouse. I don't, but yeah. I don't. I don't remember if it. So the lighthouses are, most of them. Do it was have, really cool. She had a cool room too. So oh yeah. It was like yeah. It was really yeah. weird shape. The lighthouses, a lot of the lighthouses in the United States do have people living there to keep up the grounds, but they're not actually operating the lighthouse oh, itself. Okay. The one in Boston is the oldest one, and the U.S. government basically passed a law saying that a person has to turn the lights on and the lights off. Okay, so it's not automatic. One. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Ah. So people live in the lighthouses, and they are working. They're just not... They're not. They're automatic. They're not having to go up and light the. Right. Things. Yeah. They're I normally see. like Coast Guard families that are living Got there it. to keep the grounds and make sure there's no vandalism and things like that. I see. Yeah, because I would put like a stick man on the side of the <coughs> lighthouse there. I was wondering when stick man was going to make an appearance tonight. Just saying. Adding white and white to my cadmium yellow here. And it do that in this middle part here. You would add a stick man where? To the side of your lighthouse? Yeah, right there in the lighthouse. You can make a naked t shirt with a stick man in the lighthouse. We're getting close to our t shirts being ready. Yeah. I'm really excited. Do and I'm not having to mind. do any of the work, which is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of it. <laughs> yeah, when people are voting on their their favorites, we put some examples up in the Facebook group. Yeah, the thankful art one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's. Uh, and I must say, who? Which one is leading the pack? Uh, I don't know. My logo? No, Stickman. I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> of course. It was. Oh, you're dissing, throwing some shade <laughs> towards Stickman. I learned that term recently. I can't believe he beat the poppy. He beat my logo. He beat everything. He's like the man. Stick man is the man. It's all right. I can't. Whose channel is this? Start? <laughs> Just, no, never mind. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'm just riding your coattails, baby. <laughs> I love it. I but, love it. Like you said, I don't have to do any of the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so let's do, actually, before I do more details, I'm going to 
at our little porthole windows in our lighthouse. This one has like circular windows, which I thought was kind of cool. So there's kind of one right smack dab in the middle here, and it's slightly off center. Sort of on the dark side of the lighthouse. One there, one here. If you don't want to draw them in this way, you can use a, a, a back back end of a of a brush and dot it on. You can get a perfectly circular dot using the back end of the brush. Make these a little bit bigger. So uh, Chad is jumping in with the uh, facts for the lighthouses. Okay. So Kay Patton says the party hat is actually called a dome okay. and is usually top with a ball vent and lightning rod or, ah, or wind vane. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I think there was some windows here. I'm just going to kind of put some lines in right here for our observation windows. Called the dome? Yep. Dome. Okay. I like party hat better, but that's alright. Yeah, party hat. It kind of looks like one. <laughs> dome. Okay, putting a little bit of highlight here with a little bit of white I'm going to add it to my brown. Just tapping in a little bit of detail there. Let's grab a little bit more white. And I'm going to highlight the leading edge, the edge that's closest to the light here, with just a little bit of highlights like that and around the windows too covered up a little bit more of that than I meant to there we go grab a little bit of the dark add a little bit of the dark on this side and the top edge of that and there's like a railing, so I'll go ahead and do some little lines for our railing up here. And some lines right here for our railing right here. And I'm really kind of making it a broken up line so it looks like the light's kind of poking through and breaking up the, you know, it wouldn't be a perfect perfect line because that light's kind of shining through it so you can use a liner brush if you want to get it a little bit more perfect I just think I want to use the edge of my my Princeton I made kind of a gray here I'm gonna put in some separations in the glass just some thin lines there. And I'll go ahead and kind of clean up that rail just a little bit. Grab my round brush again. Clean it out. We'll add a little bit of this gray color, and a little burnt umber and white, a little bit of black, and we'll put a highlight on the inside of these windows, just slightly on the inside of the dark line. So, and then we'll do another one on this side, a little bit brighter this time. Like it's catching the lip of the window sill or something. We'll do I want to make 
make sure that that's fairly dry. Grab the number two. Again, or I yeah, I'm gonna use number two. Bright. And some of that yellow, white mixture. Wipe my brush clean, and we can actually use some of the glazing liquid this time to make it a little bit more transparent if we want to. Wipe most of it off, and I'm going to set my brush down close to the yellow and just pull straight lines out from the lighthouse. That's good enough, I think. Do a little bit on this direction. And then I'm going to make sure that's all dry. I'm going to kind of do a circular shadow or highlight really on the lighthouse right here. It's kind of picking up that brown. It wasn't dry. Let yours dry. some white, dab in, in the white right here, just trying to kind of make it look like it's glowing, really, really bright white right in the center there, whoa, that's way too much paint. Okay. And then I can grab some yellow and pull in some yellow around the sides. Blend that in a little bit. I'm using it on the edge of it now, kind of pulling some rays. You can get as crazy with this as you want. If you want it really bright, you do it bright, or you can keep it real, real subtle, just however you want to do. I think that this needs some work. I'm not really happy with that yet, so I'm going to put some light color on this side. I think it'll help make it look a little more rounded. Louie, I love the way that you've done the light into the, the stream streaks. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think this is really one of my favorites that we've done for our bonus videos, honestly. I really like it. Okay, some yeah. white. Yeah, somebody earlier said that they really, really like this one. Probably one of their more favorite because of the techniques Good. that's being taught. Um, Just know, some different stuff that I don't yeah, normally get to exactly. do. exactly. Mm -hmm. Things that they want to work on. So. Good going to help them out a lot. Wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. That's that's the goal. And the nice thing about these Patreon videos is, the you know, these are uh, oftentimes longer, you know, videos and maybe a little bit more complicated than I might normally get to do on my regular Saturday shows. So it's nice to be able to do these for you guys as a little treat and not have to worry about the time or anything like that, you know. Okay, I think we're about done. What do you think, honey? I think. Let me use my wet paper towel here and carefully kind of wipe off my chalk lines. And if I've got I've got some little white bits there, so what I'm gonna do is go through some with some phthalo blue with some that's watered down little bit and just kind of lay that over and it'll kind of get in those little white spots where the chalk may have picked up. And this is also uh, what we can do in our clouds here too. We can go back in now and if we want to tone down some of these clouds or deepen up some of the shadows in here, we can use this watered down paint or we can add, you know, a little bit of uh, 
glazing liquid to our phthalo blue and add it over the top of our clouds and our lightning bolts to soften up the effect, make some of them look a little farther away or a little bit less intense color. See how that kind of maybe around here, I don't want it quite as bright. So you don't have to go back in and put in your dark color, you can just kind of lighten up these clouds with a little bit of glazing. And really, I find that glazing on top of a bright color gives it a totally different look than if you had blended the two together. It's just a little, it's a lot softer, it's a lot more subtle, and um, the colors often are much more vibrant because you can, you know, this phthalo blue is a transparent color, and I chose it specifically because it is a transparent color because I know it, it will look good as a glaze. Um, a a th an opaque color would not look quite as good as a glaze. So keep that in mind when you're picking your glaze colors. Um, Thalo blue, quinacridone magenta, and ultramarine blue are all, and even the turquoise, they're all transparent or translucent colors so they work really well as glazes. here and there just because we can I like it let's add a little bit down in the sea too I feel like the seas can use a little bit of the bright blue we'll wipe that off and we'll just add a little bit of it ties in the, the sky too. Oh, and I did add a little tiny bit of yellow to my, um, to my white glazing liquid and a little bit of yellow, mostly white. Wipe most of it off and just tiny bit of yellow up in these clouds it or uh, peaks of the uh, foam kind of ties that whole thing together you can also add a little tiny bit of it up in our clouds too in some of our bright areas Okay, I think we're done. I like it. Oh, one more thing. Nope, we're not done. I keep saying that we're done. We're not. Uh, we need our splash. So we're going to grab white and make a puddle. Lots of water with our fan brush. And I'm going to cover up anything I don't want. So I don't want it up above about right here. So I'm just going to use my hand to cup it and tap with my finger. And I'm kind of pointing my brush in this direction so that it kind of is going to go in that way. Keep it real close to the canvas. Ooh, that's good. I like that one. Oh, so you're kind of giving that foam mm -hmm. being thrown foam up. Foam splashy. Foam splashy. Mm -hmm. Check. And if you want to, what I did with mine is I kind of let it dry for a second and then I just sort of tapped with my finger to kind of, it blends it in slightly and gives it a different sort of softer look. It sort of smushes out those perfect really round dots and makes them look a little bit more messy. You can leave them perfectly round if you prefer, but... I just like the look of this. It kind of made it a little bit more 
unpredictable. I want it a little bit more. The more water you have, the bigger your drops will be. So if you See how close I'm getting to my canvas? I get real close, I can get these kind of little lines happening too. Where you get this kind yeah, of sea spray lines. With this eye camera, just barely caught you doing it. Oh, yes. It kind of does these like lines here. Really cool. But you got to get real close and make sure you don't touch the canvas. <laughs> so. I think somebody's knocking to come in. <laughs> It sounds like it, huh? I got a little bit in the wrong direction. There we go. You kind of want to point the bristles in the direction you want the spray to happen. So this one, is the most of the paint's right here, so I need to turn it. There we go. There we go. Okay. I got a bunch of spray up in the sky that I don't necessarily want, so I'm just going to tap it off. Nope, it's dry. I didn't catch it in time. That's okay. That's all right. All right, I think we're good. Let me sign it real quick. And we're going to call it good. And then stick girl. Oh, that's right. Our Patreon mascot. That's right. Here she is. So she's already got. Should we give her lightning? Yeah, I think a lightning bolt. A lightning bolt. Let's do a pink one. Just because she's girly. So girly. detail into this. <laughs> hey. <laughs> she, der she deserves the best. She does. She does. <laughs> she only gets to come out once a month, so. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing her lemon party dress, her Van Gogh party dress. Probably need to give her some hair eventually. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. That was it. Hope you enjoyed it. We really enjoyed showing it to you. This has been a really fun project. So glad. Uh, we got to bring it to you. So glad it worked out. <laughs> yeah, did, we did great. Good. Good deal. Yeah, not well, too not long, we, too. Just under two hours. So hopefully you'll try this. I uh, hope you guys have real good success with it. It wasn't all that hard, I think, if you follow the steps, uh, hopefully. So um, share it with me in the groups and uh, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you want to. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks again.